Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Finance Execs, Walk a Mile in My Shoes, What Matters to the CFO. My name is Colleen Lezovitz. I'm a marketing manager at Click, and I'm joined by Click CFO Tim McCarrick, as well as Paul Van Sicklin, Director of Industry Solutions for Financial Services, and Dave Reeb, VP of Global Marketing Operations. Before we begin, just some quick instructions regarding the webinar. As you can see, we are utilizing WebEx. All participants will be on mute throughout the entire session. However, if you do experience any technical difficulties, please utilize the Q&A window in the bottom right-hand corner of your console. Please also use this window to submit questions at any time during the session because we will be reserving time at the end to answer them. Also know that this session is being recorded and I will be sending all attendees a link to the on-demand version tomorrow. At this time, I would like to hand things over to Paul. Paul? Thanks, Colleen. Let me start by showing our legal disclaimer. You're able to read this document in full on our website, and this recorded webinar will be posted on click.com tomorrow. My name is Paul Van Sicklin, and I work for the Industry Solutions Team at Click. We have an exciting web event for you today where we will hear thought leadership from our Chief Financial Officer, Tim McCarrick. Tim will describe ways that Click uses its own software to move the finance team, and the entire organization for that matter, farther up the analytics spectrum to turn data into insight and that insight into action. I'll then review several solution areas for the finance function utilizing Click data discovery software, and you'll see a demo from Dave Reeve, VP of Marketing Operations, with an app that is used to monitor the ROI of our marketing spend, a subject that Tim is very interested in. We'll leave some room for a Q&A at the end and also talk about our upcoming Click events. Change is constant and the successful chief financial officers embrace and influence the change with fact-based analytical approach. Tim McCarrick joined 15, Click 15 months ago as chief financial officer. Prior to joining Click, Tim held the position of chief operating officer at DLL, a $30 billion asset-based financing company and spent over 20 years in various finance and operational roles at Xerox Corporation, where he was a corporate officer. Tim, thanks for being with us today. I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Paul. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I want to welcome all of the attendees to our event. Thanks for joining us. So what matters to a CFO? It's sort of a catchy title to a webinar, but also, I think, a common question. Uh, in fact, a Google search on the phrase returns over 6.8 million entries. Now today, we're certainly going to get more specific than that and put this question in a business context from a CFO perspective. But we'll also leverage this into a discussion on an another important and related question, why the CFO matters and how a culture of analytics can assist in the effort to maintain financial control become an influential consensus builder and an effective strategist within an organization. So let's take a look at some of the fundamental priorities of the CFO role. Firmly establishing and striving for continuous improvement in the financial reporting processes is a key priority of every finance and accounting group. Improving the accuracy and efficiency of reporting by reducing the number of touch points to consolidate financials while providing the ability to move with the speed of business is certainly essential. This foundation lays the groundwork for greater internal controls and transparency into business results. A reliable internal control environment sets the foundation for the business to operate effectively. Proper thought into the design and implementation of this foundation will stand the test of time and prevent costly and embarrassing business or financial issues in the future. Now, when analyzing financial and operational data, a common question that needs to be answered is, how do you know that the data is correct? Governance and internal controls allow for confidence in the decisions made based on this data. Providing visibility and transparency into the core operations of an organization enables lines and executive management to understand the what, where, and when about the business. But more importantly, it allows for asking and answering the next several questions to obtain even more insights into the business drivers, 
including the why, thus allowing data and analytics to drive the prescription to business problems. Providing ready to access secure, reliable information are all essential to using business information and results to drive continuous improvement. Challenging the status quo and acting on business insights provided by financial data leads to positive and continuous change. And all of this leads to confidence in the numbers and contributes to the ability to influence decision-making behavior. Consistently relying on and promoting an analytics culture where decisions are executed, results are analyzed, and refinements are made lead to improvements in the efficiency and effectiveness of an organization, which leads to higher growth and profitability. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, the CFO's influence on the strategic direction of the company is certainly critical to the role. With a full 360-degree view of the business, a CFO is well positioned to help guide the organization forward in the best ways possible. But again, maybe the better question is, why does the CFO matter? Meaning, how can a CFO build on these fundamental elements of the role to have a balanced business-minded impact on the company? Balancing risk and rewards, maximizing profitability, and creating and maintaining a sustainable competitive advantage in the marketplace are all key concerns to an organization surviving and thriving. Ownership of the data and analytics does not always reside in the finance shop, but subject matter expertise about the connection between operations and the financial statements does. This provides the CFO with a unique opportunity to take the role to the next level. Now we know that accounting controls and financial reporting are important and fundamental drivers for the finance group. But these areas can sometimes be seen as bottlenecks to an organization's ability to unlock the true potential of analytics and drive an analytics culture. Streamlining and solidifying these processes is part of the continuous improvement loop I spoke about before and results in a transformation in focus, really from building and maintaining complicated consolidation processes to obtaining a true understanding of the drivers of the business. As a consensus builder, managing trade-offs and negotiating a consensus between functions of an organization is best done from an independent, unbiased position. Now, there's no better way to remain independent and unbiased than by using facts and data and approaching a business problem from an analytical perspective, thus providing visibility to how decisions will impact the bottom line. For a CFO to be influential, it's important to keep an open mind while helping the organization to fully consider alternative courses of action. And too often, business decisions are not based on facts. In fact, I recently read a survey of business leaders which revealed that one in three often make decisions based on information they don't trust or don't have. Passionately developing and presenting alternatives can only stand on the back of credibility and credibility is built through high quality of internal controls, financial reporting, and prior experience building a consensus within those functional teams. Using data and analytics to look in the rearview mirror to understand where the business has been provides strategic leaders the firm ground to stand on as they look to the future and influence the strategic direction of the organization. This is where all the pieces come together to provide a well-informed, fact-based vision of the future and leads to important decisions around investment and resource levels. Now, as a company, Click utilizes our own software extensively across the entire organization, and we have over 300 applications deployed in virtually all functional areas of the company. This slide highlights some key examples, including from the top of the funnel, we combined Salesforce.com data scored with Marketo for analyzing success rates of marketing programs. Throughout the sales and invoicing process, we track and compare actual results to targeted results across a complex sales organization designed to serve small, medium, and enterprise customers. Using ClickView, we track sales efficiency and provide the sales team with performance reporting. 
Customer segmentation and 360-degree type analysis is monitored on an ongoing basis and even merged with survey data collected both internally and externally. Human resource applications are common, and in fact, significant process improvements in HR budgeting have been achieved in the last 12 months, effectively reducing a several-month process to just a few days. And finally, market development tracks our success with click apps that size market potential, measure industry success, and track solution profiles generated in the field. More specifically within finance and accounting, click applications are used to provide consolidated financial profiles for dozens of legal entities representing different currencies while integrating general ledger, forecast system, and workday information for a real-time, one-stop financial view of the P&L, including drill-down analytical capability. Very powerful. Through my CFO dashboard, I have customized visibility to what's most important to me as I monitor performance trends across the business. We also use applications to track accounts receivable performance, fixed assets, internal productivity trends, expense performance, and discount analysis, as well as to provide fact-based support for key external reporting metrics. But you know, the best testament to the power of data-driven results can be found in some of the use cases implemented within our customer base. Cisco designs, manufactures, and sells internet protocol-based networking and other products related to the communications and information technology industry. They've deployed ClickView to employees in sales operations, increasing visibility to its install base, and providing identification over 100 million additional revenue opportunity. In addition, they've saved over $4 million in cost to date using Click. McAfee, part of the Intel Security Group, empowers over 125 million businesses, public sector, and home users to safely experience the benefits of the Internet. They deployed ClickView and achieved immediate efficiency gains in the finance department and quickly rolled out apps to key individuals in the sales team and upper management up to a 30% improvement in efficiency of aggregating data, ultimately moving to a single source of truth and providing operational and business process improvements. The National Health Service, NHS, is made up of publicly funded healthcare systems in the United Kingdom. A long and documented success with the NHS can be found on our website, and they have calculated over 42 million euros of cost savings in the procurement areas through the use of Click Apps. Let's take a quick step back for a moment and look at the overall analytics journey that CFOs and organizations can take to deliver against key priorities. We like to look at this market through the standpoint and perspective of the customer by looking at the intersect points between the complexity level of the analytical needs of the customer and the degree of knowledge required about a particular business issue or opportunity. This chart plots a typical journey for a customer along the analytics value curve. So starting in the lower left end of this graph, we see the intersect points of more simple use cases highlighting the what, where, and when of activities in the past. That's what we call the descriptive part of the market. This is where principally visualization helps users understand history. A simple example of this could include visualizing where headcount exists across various geographies, or understanding when the trends of past expenditures have been for a particular business unit. As customers move towards more complex use cases and want more insights about exactly why something happened in their business, they move into the diagnostic part of the market, where it's important for users to be able to interact with the data in a very agile and flexible way so that they can gain more and more insights about their business. This helps drive even more value from analytics and provides for more meaningful impacts to the business. And as they move even further up the curve towards much more complex use cases and really look to the future, you enter the predictive analytics space where data scientists and data specialists seek to determine what's really likely to happen in the future. Now, leveraging our two product strategy with both ClickView and ClickSense, we cover a large part of this analytics continuum, allowing our customers to address a wide variety of their analytical business needs 
and generate compelling ROIs from their business intelligence investments. So let's now go a little bit deeper into some of our functional, functionally specific applications. And for that, I'll hand it over to Paul. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. The value achieved with, with ClickView and ClickSense is on both ends of the process or both ends of the spectrum for financial planning analysis teams. First, utilizing the click engine for the, those hardcore processing necessary for building a forecast. Making comparisons between forecast and actual, forecast and budget, and forecast to forecast. And then even chasing down and documenting those variances to the lowest level of detail. All of those are very uh, manually intensive efforts uh, that can be addressed with click view and click sense. The McAfee story mentioned, McAfee story mentioned uh, by Tim is a repeatable uh, a repeatable success story, and our finance and accounting team customers are experiencing transformational change. On the expense management side, providing transparency of expenses involves combining general ledger data with underlying source data. Our customers have shared many examples of expense savings through the use of Click applications. For example, combining general ledger data with third-party travel ledger data from Concur and exposing employees' airline booking behavior saved uh, six figures at one of our clients. A top 25 bank imported printer logs into ClickView and tracked each employee's printing patterns, how many pages they printed, what was they printed color, black and white, and what those costs were. And exposing this behavior and holding people accountable became a, a key part of expense management process and, again, saved over six figures for that particular client. Another top global investment firm has saved over seven figures by, by optimizing their IT server utilization. On the revenue and profitability side, creating analysis across the organization to promote meaningful change is possible. Pricing analysis, for example, across sales organization, product types, customer segments, has been set free from static reports and clunky, difficult to manage spreadsheets. Specific data views are, are easily provided to the user in a guided way to drive consistency into how analysis is done and how decisions are made. A consistent approach across the company drives meaningful improvements and provides an opportunity to focus on value-added discussions within the organization. We hear many customers tell us about moving away from the old days when different numbers were presented and the discussion was focused on inconsistent or incomplete data. Two of my favorites, the cash flow and the balance sheet, all this manual effort that's been in the past required to track revenue expenses, they've basically forgotten about the balance sheet and income statement and how how and, and actually disconnected this analysis from your income statement analysis. Great examples of success here can be seen in, in some of our financial services clients where, they, where top global banks are using Click to analyze the impact of changes in regulatory capital requirements to calculate return on equity or, or RAROC, which is return adjusted return on capital. And finally, risk and compliance is the responsibility of everyone in an organization, whether it be managing, expect, managing exceptions to credit rules, complying with Sarbanes-Oxley, or filing daily balance sheets with the Fed, Click customers are finding the integration of compliance and risk and governance concerns into business applications. This results in an in exponential increase in the internal control environment in an organization. This particular application that you see on the screen not only allows the organization to manage the risk-reward equation, it also has built-in exception reports that provides users instant feedback of customers or segments that are outside of the policy. Dave Reeve is the VP of Global Marketing Operations at Click and responsible for systems, processes, and analysis, which underpins continuous improvements in marketing ROI. He has 15 years' experience working in the industry, and during his four-and-a-half-year tenure at Click, he's seen great success utilizing Click apps to optimize marketing spend. Dave has an excellent demonstration of the value that ClickView has provided to a very strategic area, optimizing marketing ROI. Dave? Thanks, Paul. Um, 
As Paul said, uh, I'm leading the marketing ops function here at uh, Click, and really we exist to uh, help maximise the return on marketing investment. Um, what I'd like to do is just give you a, a little bit of background in, in terms of the infrastructure we use um, and just go through our cycle of, in, of continuous improvement and then jump into um, an application called Campaign Performance um, so you can see this in action. So the infrastructure that we use, we use uh, Salesforce.com as our CRM, Marketo for email, landing pages, lead scoring, and so on, um, and then have various other tools that we use to manage our data, um, manage events, and track budgets and spend. So um, that's all very well and good, but um, particularly in marketing with the, with the number of applications and tools that you can use out there, pulling all of that together so that you can really understand a consolidated view is uh, it's really uh, important. Uh, and actually what, what it's going to give us is um, a view on the overall picture within marketing and uh, ways to optimize our spend. So the way that we look at it is in these uh, four areas, really, which is um, planning, execution, follow-up, and insight. So from a planning perspective, what we really um, try to do across the organization is pull together our marketing plans in such a way that we can drill down on them on any dimension that we want to in order to understand what marketing is promising to deliver to the organization. And that stake in the ground then is what we're able to measure against during, um, during the execution phase. As we execute marketing campaigns, we need to have the capability of segmenting the audiences appropriately. And with the power of being able to link all of the different um, sources of data and different dimensions to, to build out our targets and uh, segmentation, we find um, a click view uh, incredibly powerful in doing that. In terms of uh, maximizing the return on investment, as, mar as marketing produces um, leads and interest in the market, we need to make sure that we are uh, uh, calling people and following up at the appropriate time. Um, in order to do that, we have to track what's going on. So are we making those calls within what time frame and what's the result? So that's really maximizing all of those efforts that we're putting into the uh, marketing machine. Finally here, and crucially here, is the insight. And the insight, um, which I'm going to show you in a minute, uh, a couple of scenarios within campaign performance, what it allows you to do is really drill down into what has been working, what's not, what should we do more of, or consider testing to um, feed into the planning process for marketing. So this is a cycle of continuous improvement. And um, the, the key thing here is that uh, this is not a one-time effort or a quarterly review with a report. This is being done real time by marketers. This is in their hands. And they can course correct appropriately. The key metrics that we track, they're quite industry standard. Um, but, but the beauty of uh, using our tool is that we're able to pull all of that together into one application. Is Pipeline and, is, uh, pipeline and revenue is a multiple of marketing investment. Well, it's the levers behind those that marketing are able to control. So how many responses are we um, driving on uh, particular campaigns? What's the inbound web traffic? Uh, are we following up on leads when they're um, ready to be called? What are our conversion rates and how, how are we optimizing those? And what's the percentage of pipeline contribution from marketing to the organization? So what I'll do now is I will turn this over to going into the application itself and just try and run through a couple of scenarios. Thanks, Paul. So here I am coming into my marketing dashboard as a marketing leader. So my first scenario here is um, a leader of the uh, Benelux region here at Click, and you'll note that this is incredibly scrambled data, so um, you'll see some, uh, some funny numbers in here, but this illustrates the point. 
So if I'm the marketing leader for this region, I can come in and see at the highest level my key metrics and how I'm performing. Um, and uh, one of the beauties of what we're using ClickView for here is to actually build the model behind how you attribute marketing uh, activity to opportunities. So we have the different tools, we have Salesforce and Marketo and so on, but how do you logically um, understand what marketing has contributed? And we'll use industry best practice to do that. We use a uh, serious decisions methodology, but we build that logic into, um, into ClickView. So here you will see the contribution of marketing to pipeline. Um, and as a leader in this area, I might want to go and just take a quick look into one sub-region um, and understand if I move from tab to tab as I drill further down, what is it that um, has been effective uh, within uh, pipeline? So which campaigns have been producing the most uh, results? What you're able to do is just drill between ver various different tabs and understand different dimensions on your data and explore it um, intuitively with knowledge of your business. So here, if I look at a stack rank of the campaigns that have performed um, best, that's one view on this, but I could also equally go and have a look at it from uh, what stage and pipeline have these uh, opportunities got to. So as the marketing leader, I'm able to have a very credible conversation with the sales organization and with finance too, in terms of what is marketing delivering to the organization. So that's one scenario as a, as a leader of this uh, function. Now, if I'm actually uh, a marketing manager and I'm running this stuff, I need to be able to see um, what results am I getting? And I need to be able to react quickly and change course if necessary. So a scenario might be that a marketing manager spends some time with their uh, sales counterpart. So in that kind of meeting, you would uh, sit down, you'd say, right, there's this chap here. We're having that meeting and look, this is what marketing's influenced of this um, salesperson's territory. These is the total value, and it's split between different stages in, uh, in the pipeline. That's interesting, but what's working and what's not? Okay, let me go back to the stack rank of the campaigns that have been working here. Interestingly, let's go and have a look at what's not working, and let's stop doing this stuff. And the account manager, of course, he's looking at it from many, a very different dimension than a marketer. So. One of the things that we have built into here is the ability to look by many different date dimensions. So it's very quick to do it. So if you're a marketing manager, you might talk about, well, these are the campaigns I run in the period, and this is the effect that will affect the future. From a sales perspective, you're going to be looking more at what, what opportunities I'm trying to close in 2014, what effect did marketing have there, which accounts, if I look at the actual account name, which accounts have we impacted? Which ones have we not? And therefore, do we need to do some targeted marketing activity into that? I won't go into further scenarios here, but as you drill further down into the depths of this, you can get really sophisticated in terms of the demographics of the people responding to your campaign. So you might find that you know this is uh, very appealing to um, finance professionals, um, but. Um, we need to uh, change the messaging and so on to public sector, for example. So hopefully that gives um, uh, an overview of a couple of scenarios which illustrate how we continuously refine the way that we're marketing and optimizing the, um, our marketing spend. So this is Tim again. Thanks, Dave. Um, excellent. And this is just one of the examples of, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the over 300 applications that we've deployed internally. Um, frankly, this is one of my favorites um, for, I think, pretty obvious reasons to the uh, a finance professional. And Dave and I work pretty closely together uh, on it as we uh, manage the return on the marketing investments that we've made. So I hope you enjoyed that. So at this point, I'd like to turn it back to Colleen, and we'll uh, begin the Q&A section. Great. Thanks, Tim. All right, we have some questions coming in, so we'll go through them as they come in. Um, please feel free to submit any questions that you may have, and hopefully we'll get to it before the time's out. If not, we can reach out to you individually to discuss your question. Okay, first question I see 
that has come in is for Tim. Tim, as a CFO, how do you ensure adoption for dashboards and quick apps within your organization? Uh, uh, so that's a good question. Um, I think a couple things here. First of all, um, adoption is really all around how you can develop uh, a return on investment for the user. So the first thing that I think is important is you have to understand what the business need is uh, and what problem you're trying to solve. Uh, how can uh, Click uh, software platform help you solve a particular business problem that you have? And um, what we have found is that the, the leverage in the application of the software on specific business problems, um, consulting with our sales organization and our services organization, provides uh, really great insights into those business problems and provides um, methods and applications for companies to uh, actually run their business on or get new insights so that they can um, answer a particular question. So first and foremost, adoption comes from getting a return on that investment in time that you make as a business user or that investment in time and money that you make as a, an enterprise customer. Uh, I think the other dimension that's important here, looking a bit broader, is the change management dynamic here. Um, certainly having better insight into the business and turning uh, data into insightful information provides for a different perspective on the business. And, and sharing that and turning that into an action plan that um, improves the business or improves uh, your particular functional area um, can also bring with it a certain degree of change. So I think being clear with the stakeholders for the business and being clear um, as a business owner as to what uh, problems you're trying to solve and what the implications are going to be and socializing those implications within the organization will help drive even more and more uh, adoption throughout the organization. Great. Thanks, Tim. Here's another question for you. What is the difference between ClickView and ClickSense? Yep, so good question again. Um, so I mentioned earlier our two product strategy, um, and that is ClickView and ClickSense. ClickView is our heritage and our flagship product that to date has provided uh, over 33,000 customers uh, the ability really to drive and gain new insights uh, and ask and answer probing business questions. So this is what we refer to as our guided analytics uh, platform. Um, guided analytics meaning develop applications by a few people but consume them by many people within an organization. And this has obviously been uh, very successful and um, the customer use case examples that I shared with you earlier are uh, good examples of where ClickView uh, has been leveraged within those clients. ClickSense is actually our next generation self-service data visualization uh, platform and application that really uh, can empower everyone to easily create uh, visualizations um, that are flexible and agile and help them drive exploration and discovery through their own personal intuition. So this is more of a, a platform for data visualization and analytics for really everyone, every business user, and um, each person with their own particular business need or intuition can customize their visualizations um, as they see fit. But importantly, it's done within an environment of um, strong governance and controls around the data that's being utilized. So you can have faith that the visualizations that you're creating and the um, uh, analytical uh, output that you get is based on uh, the data and, and a set of facts that you can rely on. Thanks, Tim. All right, Dave, here's a question for you. How long did it take to build the marketing application? Yeah, another great question. Um, and I think actually it, it refers back to something Tim said earlier, which is about breaking this into two areas. One is actually just scoping. What's the, what is it that you're trying to answer? Which questions? So I think that if you're talking about building the application, I would certainly build in the time needed to define the requirements and understand how people are going to interact with this data. So I would say that that for us in the initial phase would have been um, a probably four-week project to really scope what we were doing. And then um, this really has been built in phases. 
So we're on a <coughs> cycle of this every three to six months of improvements and re responding to user requirements. But an initial rollout of this would have been within weeks rather than months just to get up and running with the basic data visible. To get to this state, clearly we've been running this for um, a couple of years and I think that it just iterates over time and depending on new ways of measuring marketing and different requirements, we, we continually refine it. Thanks, Dave. Tim, another question that came in for you. How does a CFO deal with the difference in, in analyzing data prepared from a dynamic, constantly changing de database versus the data in a static general ledger database? Hmm. Okay. Well, I think, um, first of all, you, you'd want to definitely em embrace both of those, right? Um, from a, a CFO perspective or a finance perspective, you want to deal with both types of information and um, provide analytics on both types of information. So from a static perspective, um, this is all about financial reporting and, and for a public company, critically important that um, you have the audit trail in place back to that static information in the general ledger that forms the basis of your financial reporting, your quarterly assertions, um, and the um, publicly filed statements that we need to make. So critically important. Um, but really the, the changing uh, database is really about how do you manage and monitor the trends in the business. Um, and that can be uh, potentially a bit more exciting, right, uh, because you've got your fingers on the pulse of the business and are helping to guide and manage it both at the tactical operational uh, level but as well um, how that links to strategy. So I think you have to embrace both and recognize the, um, the value of each. Paul, a question for you related to different types of apps. Do you have manufacturing and logistic apps? That's a great question and uh, gives me a chance to champion my team. My team is a team of industry uh, solution experts and we have a section on click.com called the solutions area. And on that, you can find not only manufacturing, uh, logistics, transportation logistics, retail, financial services, um, high tech, all of the major industries that are, that are out there. Uh, we have a whole page dedicated to each one of the industries. So feel free to find that on click.com. Great. And then going back to financial services, the question that came in is asking, what financial software applications have you worked with? So I don't have the specific number, but financial financial software, finance and accounting software for us is a data source, uh, just like an operational system is a data source. And you can uh, access data from virtually any data source with, uh, with your Click platform. Uh, just to name a few, though, we do have, we do have an S-based connector. Uh, we have, uh, I've seen people touch PeopleSoft. Uh, I've seen, I've seen uh, many other general ledger uh, areas. The, the general ledger itself is simply a data source to us, and we can bring that data in and, and expose it. We can also expose it at the, at the very uh, fine granular detail level as well as the transaction level. Great. Tim, a question for you related to ClickSense. Our attendee is asking, is ClickSense an extension of ClickView or a separate application? So ClickSense and ClickView are, are separate products. Um, there are, are common features associated with them, um, principally on the back-end engine, uh, which is our in-memory associative search engine. So there's commonality there. But they are absolutely separate products. Um, and as I mentioned, um, we really target ClickView as the guided analytics platform uh, and ClickSense as the self-service data visualization platform. Thank you. A uh, few attendees have asked this question related to our presentation. People are wondering if they can get a copy of the application that, application that was shown and demoed, and if there are other demos available. Yeah. Okay. What about, um, okay, so just a question. Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll read it and answer it. So, a copy of the can you get a copy of the applications uh, and demos shown in this webinar? And 
on our demo site, it's demo.click.com, we have over 80 applications that are broken up uh, between the industries and across and across the horizontal, such as finance, uh, marketing, IT applications. And what our customers often do is they'll they'll go on their path of building a click application, and they'll use those to generate ideas. And in some in some cases, they actually use the apps themselves. So on demo.click.com, you can get a copy of, of most of the ones that you saw. Uh, and if there is one in particular that they had interest that you don't see out there, you can uh, contact Click, and we can get we can get you a copy of that app. Thank you, Paul. Mm -hmm. Another question for you, Paul. Can I integrate my S-based data into Click? Yeah, similar answer on the financial software applications that you work with. Uh, S-based is the data source. To click, and if your use case is to bring in the data that's been pre-aggregated in SBase into Click, then that is a perfectly a reasonable use case, and we see it quite often. Okay, Tim, with another question for you: Will ClickSense replace ClickView in the future? I love all the interest in the two product strategies. So. Um, Clearly, uh, these are focused on um, parts of, of the same market, of the broad analytics market as I described. Uh, and we continue to be um, very impressed and encouraged by the great customer feedback, feedback we get uh, around ClickView and how incredibly valuable and um, what great ROIs customers have gotten on ClickView, and we expect that to continue. We would expect uh, existing customers to continue to um, deploy ClickView and, and build applications. Um, but for new projects with existing customers or even brand new customers, most likely they would start with ClickSense. So I think over time there's going to be a mix effect of the two products, but we have been very clear in the marketplace um, for us and in part due to customer feedback that we will continue to sell, service, and maintain and enhance ClickView for you know, as long as there's a market demand. So um, we feel comfortable that both products will be around for uh, some time to come. Okay. Paul, a question for you. How does the dashboard refresh as each database is updated? So when, a, when an application is built and put on a click server, uh, there is a, there's a scheduler that, that you set up, and the application can be either kicked off by another program or it can be kicked off at a certain time. Or, so the, the, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount of flexibility as to when and how often an application is refreshed. Thanks, Paul. Tim, another question for you. An attendee is asking, who is typically the owner of click apps in a, in a large company? The business intelligence VP, IT, CFO? Yeah, good one. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, and I think it's been a consistent theme today, um, having uh, a credibility and having faith in the data that's being used in these applications is a critical component of how to get value from, uh, from your analytical investments. So, um, in a large company, we would be working very closely in good partnership with the IT organization to provide access to a governed set of data that has been uh, validated by the IT organization. Um, apps, more specifically, leveraging that data um, uh, would largely be owned either within the IT community or by the business team that has developed those apps. So again, using ClickView, the guided analytics platform, um, you'll have um, a smaller group of developers who will provide these guided applications out to a much larger use, uh, a group of users. Um, those can be either owned in the business or in IT. Uh, for ClickSense, the self-service uh, data visualization platform and application, um, certainly due to the sort of individualized nature of those visualizations uh, where we have people um, interacting with uh, um, the visualization itself and solving their business problem and drilling down in, um, oftentimes those can be um, owned, again, at the business user level, but through our governance dashboard, IT can certainly have full visibility to uh, what applications have been deployed, how they're being used, and what data they're sourcing along the way. Okay, thank you, Tim. 
Another question that's come in, how do I find out more about connecting to Salesforce.com? I can take that. This is Paul. So Salesforce.com, another another data source for, for click, and, and the great thing is you'll actually be able to connect to not only that, but other data sources. Specifically how to get it, you can go on our website. There is uh, there is documentation on, on how to do it. There's also a demo on demo.click.com that is the Salesforce.com demo, so you can go uh, and get the information from our website. I, I do want to though, uh, pass that over to Dave. You know, Dave, I mean, when, as, a, as a user of an application that accesses Salesforce.com, is that something that you, you're concerned with every day? Or what, what is, once, you're, once it's going, how, what does it look like for you as the, as the, at the VP level? Uh, well, from my perspective, I mean, obviously, we, we actually develop those apps within the team. But we just do it based on the data being available. So that's essentially is a non-issue for us. It's just there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. great. Great. Thank you. Okay. With that, we just wanted to make you aware of some upcoming Click events. On October 8th, we will be hosting a webinar where our chief technology officer and Chief Marketing Officer, officer will dive into and discuss our revolutionary new self-service visualization tool, ClickSense. Then on October 13th, Click has a booth presence at Dreamforce Conference, and on October 15th at Strata Hadoop World. So if you will be an at attendee at either of those, please be sure to stop by and say hi to Click. Lastly, on November 17th in Orlando, Florida, Click will be hosting the Click World Conference. The conference will offer a wealth of opportunities to explore, discover, and network, and it is designed to help you dig deeper into solutions for real-world challenges. The agenda will feature educational workshops, product launches, customer stories, an inside look at the latest innovations emerging at Click, and more. And you can find all information for all of these events I just mentioned under the company tab at the top of Click.com. So with that, this concludes today's webinar. As mentioned earlier, I will be sending all participants a link to the on-demand version, so keep an eye out for an email from me. We also invite you to visit click.com where you can learn more information about us. You can find white papers, case studies, demos, and free product downloads. Thanks again for joining us and have a wonderful